Church now, you, Matt Quinn, this is one everybody wants to see. I mean, I'm excited like you. When two teams you're talking about here with Georgetown, the way they come after you, the way they press you, this is going to be an exciting game. When you look at Georgetown, they're led by Allen Iverson, and he not only is their leader in scoring, he also is their leader in their pressure defense. The All-American does everything. What you like about him is his ability to make plays, particularly on the defensive end of the court. He's their point guard, but he's going to be very active for them. They'll go into their 1-3-1 one, one full court press. Allen Iverson brings a lot of his skills, some of them being football related. If you're watching, just keep an eye on him. He moves up to cover the ball if he has to get there. And if the ball goes back, he goes to the middle. If it gets over his head, it is Allen Iverson's responsibility to get there and make a play. And make a play he does on a diagonal. He gets some steals. That's what they got to have if they want to make some plays on the defensive end. When you look at UMass, Marcus can be obviously their leader. And first game, they clobbered Mississippi Valley. Then they went on to beat New Mexico and they ended Texas Tech's 23 game winning streak which at that time was the longest in the nation. Georgetown will be in the blue uniforms. UMass in white. Buckle up folks. I have the feeling that this is going to be a good one. Yeah, I've been I've been waiting for this. I've been dying for this game since Thursday since we you know found out who was going to be to a shot blocker. They will go for it periodically. That's how you got to foul. Iverson around the screen, and he'll go to the free throw line for three shots. Iverson, first team All-American, the defensive player of the year in the Big East Conference, steps to the free throw line. 68% free throw shooter on the season. Well, we've seen him make some plays. I mean, he made a move the other, the other night where he turned his back and flipped it over his head. I have not seen that done in basketball. That's one that you would equate on the Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, and Michael Jordan kind of playing. Iverson struggling right now from the strike. He had 32 points against Texas Tech. Took 29 shots, however. On the season, he's shooting 49% from the field. And he'll get the third to fall. Inside. First two points for him and UMass with a 4-3 lead. Iverson slides the basket. Come back here. It's the third and it's bad. into the middle before the defense could react he had it in the hole and a turnover great pressure defense by Jerome Williams and watch the All-American go he shakes him up a little bit if Carmelo reaches that's the mistake but here's the second don't get there too late Mr. Camby there's a delivery coming Allen Iverson averaging 24.9 points on the season. yesterday Allen Iverson spoke about following UMass this season and he really wanted to get a chance to play against them when they were the number one team in the nation. And he feels that right now it's an even better opportunity to see how good he and the Hoyas are, and especially with what they have on the line now, getting the chance to go to the Final Four. Gus, anytime you get a chance to go against the best and, and, and figure out where you are, you got to look forward to that. The, the good people who, the good players like Iverson, always want to see where they measure up. This is it right here. This is the best team in college basketball today, the number one seed in the tournament, and Allen Iverson and John Thompson wants to see where their team fits with, with regards to that. On top of the Hoyas, 7-5. High pick and roll. Here's Iverson, pull up, jump. Hoyas spent the first 30 minutes of their practice just sitting on the floor. He told me it was his way of pushing minds, spirits, and emotions back in order, and at this point of the tournament... Three-pointer for Edgar Padilla, and UMass takes a 10-5 lead. Here's Iverson. The ball. Oh. Trying to get it back, but he's playing against some guards that won't necessarily get caught, I don't think, in the tit for time. Tounded by Page to Iverson. Oh. Nice look. Williams. Iverson makes you come to him to guard him, and then Williams are smart to just stay in the lane because defense tends to go to their best offensive player. And if they do, they push the ball up to Allen Iverson, back to Jerome Williams. They get that off of a good defensive play. And then the next thing you have... Shooting 40% from the arc on the season. Here's Iverson. Carmelo Travieso is at his last three three-pointers. Three of five. Allen Iverson on the other end. They made gave him a standing ovation. So you know they, they enjoyed the fact that he was all right. They didn't let him know about it too. And here's Mr. Iverson starting to heat up a bit. 12 points, 33 to Marcus. Here's Iverson. 
Being pressed by Travieso. They've got him working awful hard. That's a long time to have the ball. But a team that makes you shoot bad shots, that combination with the fact that they get after you defensively means a low field goal percentage defensively and low numbers. Is that basket good? Oh, no. Yes, it is. Allen Iverson. I mean, I thought he was checked off. I thought UMass had him exactly where they wanted him to check him off. Carmella's right there in front of him. Little contact. He goes up. There's a reach. And they call it on Travieso. Dante Bright tries to get an offensive foul call. But you see Iverson, who's been trying to get some foul calls from the officials, got going on a little roll. Got to keep an eye on him now. You may have to run two after him just to get the ball out of his hands. He's starting to heat up. Iverson now with quick release. Rebound Dante right on the backside. Tipped away, and Iverson is fouled by Padilla. That's the second foul on Edgar Padilla. Had five steals in the last game, so he is the guy that gives you a lot of latitude as to what you do both offensively and defensively. Defensively with Edgar Padilla. He and Camelo Travieso, they've born on the same day in Puerto Rico. These guys really are in tune with each other. And I don't think it has much to do with born on the same day. Their spirit is so attached. You can see they're both very, very spicy guys. That was John Calipari. 60 43 UMass. And nobody thought that this game would end up like this. But right now, Othello in the school's history. Ahead, Iverson, cutting to the basket. Loose ball picked up by Padilla, but he traveled. He was on the ground with the ball, and he stepped, got up off the ground with it. That's traveling. You, you're not allowed to do that. <laughs> Allen Iverson pushes the ball up. He gets there, tries to draw a foul, and actually gets himself off balance there a little bit. And I say to you again, he, he is, it looks as though he is trying to do too much, almost like he did his first year in school. He needs to bring it back a little bit. Understand, get it stopping and going. Your changing direction is your biggest advantage when you have the quickness of Allen Iverson. And there he goes. The fact is that the SEC had only one team in the top 25 at the end of the regular season. So Allen Iverson stepping to the free throw line, one and one. Iverson, a sophomore. Two more years to play here at Georgetown. 21 points. They get 22. Here's 2-0, move 340 on the clock. Allen Iverson. He's got to go to work now. If he's, he can create some shots for himself, he's going to have to. Men, because for most of them, this will be the, the biggest athlete uh, feat that they've ever had in their life, just to participate in it. I can assure you that UMass, like all of the other four teams right now, Kentucky and UMass, have nothing but winning that in their mind. This is a, this is a one of those feelings that gives you chills. Brings back memories. Good memories. <laughs> 1976, Quinn Buckner and the Indiana Hoosiers going on to beat Michigan. And Allen Iverson takes.